Well, good morning, everybody. Wonderful to see you. Praise the Lord. We're so close to Passover. We're just hours away from the most wonderful thing. I just uh, I look forward to Passover every year. And uh, I hope that you've got somewhere where you're going tonight or tomorrow night. Um, and as a church, we've put on something so that you can be not missing out. If you haven't ever done a Passover set, I really encourage you to do so. The Lord said, do this in remembrance of me. And he was having the Passover setter at that precise moment. He was sharing the story of Egypt from deliverance through the promised land. So I'm sure Pastor Cole's going to be talking a little bit about that in a minute or two. I just uh, have just got back from Israel um, just on Friday, uh, Thursday, and uh, have had such a wonderful time over there. And I just thought I'd like to share, I was asked, Kyle asked if I could just share a little bit about the, the time that I had over there. Uh, we've seen various people go over to Israel during this pretty troubled time, and uh, you know it's a, it's a, you know some people look and say, wow, there's bombs, Iran's invading, you know, there's a war going on in Gaza and Lebanon and Hezbollah and uh, Hamas and and uh, you know so it just sounds like the place is in absolute turmoil, uh, and there is a sense of uh, you know the people is a the people know the country's at war, and so there is that um, you know that hangs there in the nation and uh, you know they've been through uh, really a terrible terrible time uh, and but business goes on time you know families have to exist everybody knows somebody who's been hurt or killed or they've got someone that's been lost in going into the war or whatever but um, so there's that in the atmosphere as well I happen to have been there over Ramadan which is the the Muslim time of prayer and fasting and uh, I was right there, I was staying very, very, you know, stone's throw from the old city, from the Temple Mount. And so I'd just like to share a little bit of the, my trip over there, probably a little different to most because I had uh, lined up quite a lot of appointments while I was over there to meet people uh, that I have known for a long time in Israel. And largely my time there was to see how we could strategically help the nation of Israel. Um, and so... I met up with other groups that were there and there's a lot of people going over to pray and just be there in a prayer. Some have gone to help, some gone to help from farms and just to help re-establish. Um, my trip was just slightly different. So um, we as a city, the Gold Coast, has a sister city in Israel called Netanya and so I was asked by our mayor to go over and meet the mayor of Netanya and uh, just to to touch base with them. And so behind me you'll see my, myself and the mayor of Netanya, uh, Miriam Freeberg, and uh, she had a beautiful lunch set up for me and uh, she announced to me that they are just doing a new suburb, a new suburb division, they're calling it the Gold Coast. <laughs> so, um, and we of course have a, a place on the Gold Coast, Coast, Coast called Netanya Place and you can go and see that down in Surface Paradise. And so you'll see there, just uh, in the next shot, there is just, uh, I don't know, uh, it might be hard to see, don't know. There is sunset at Netanya. So that's uh, the beautiful, I was sitting in the Panorama restaurant there and just wanted to, to uh, show you a sunset there going down over the Mediterranean Sea. And then the next shot is just one of the beautiful beaches there at Netanya. It's very much like the Gold Coast. We picked our sister city well. It's a very similar city. And then I went down onto their main mall and boy, it could have been on Broad Beach Mall there, down there in the Tanya. And so if you want to go and pay a visit, you know, go to Jerusalem. But as a Gold Coaster, if you want to go to our sister city, why don't you visit Netanya over there and, uh, you know, just be part of the life there. It's a, it's a bustling, hustling, bustling, lovely place. Um, I felt to the Lord say to go down on the very first day of the biblical new year, which is the uh, first of Aviv or the first of Nisan, uh, down to a place called Gilgal. It's right next to the Jordan River is where Joshua passed over the Jordan River at that place. That's the place where Yeshua was immersed by John the Baptist uh, at that place. It's the same place. Uh, we'll see um, many things happen at this place. Elijah was taken up while Elisha looked on at this place. But then the, the, the general of the army, Joshua, came across this place uh, and brought the children of Israel across and camped in a place called Gilgal. The next photo 
is there. It's just across from the Jordan River. Two and a half million people camped there on the Israel side of the border, on the Canaan side of the border. And uh, this is the place where the, the men were circumcised. The tabernacle was put up and stayed for 14 years. The manna stopped flowing from heaven. They ate from the produce of the land. This is where the angel of the Lord appeared to Joshua and gave him the strategy to take Jericho. You can see Jericho from here. If you were to turn in the exact opposite direction and face that way, you would see the lights of Jericho early in the morning. And so I went down there and God, the Lord I felt had said to go down and pray at that particular time in the morning. And so you'll see the next shot with me there with, uh, I can't play these things to save my life. It sounds like you blow up a balloon and let it go and it sounds like... <laughs> Well, that's what it sounded like, but I, I, I prayed some prayers there. My taxi, Christian Palestinian taxi driver was sitting there watching me thinking, who is this crazy guy? What's he doing there at sunrise? But you can see that beautiful sunrise coming up. It, it, look, it came up like a fire uh, right behind me over the land of Jordan, you can see in the distance. But uh, um, So then uh, part of my role there is to really... Um, more perhaps strategically uh, let the you know Christians around the world know what is happening in Israel and so uh, I connected with my friend Josh Reinstein he asked me if I would uh, go on Israel Now uh, News which is broadcast to 35 million people around the world on Daystar and so I did an interview with him that's a green screen just in case you're wondering why <laughs> why didn't they put a, a nice background in there but uh, that will be all uh, and it will come out in the next couple of weeks and then Josh I gave a copy of uh, Tash's uh, thesis, Why Do Some Arab States Recognize Israel While Others Do Not? It was just fresh off the press. And so Josh is the head of the Knesset Christian Allies Caucus. He's in the Knesset every week. And so uh, he was absolutely delighted to uh, take hold of that book. He has uh, caucuses all around the world, 93 I think it is, caucuses in every country, every country that wants one. Here in Australia it's quite well represented by our Liberal Party, 21 members of the caucus here. People who have headed up his caucus as are people like Scott Morrison and Mike Pence and Pompey and there's a whole lot of people who are very well connected to Josh. And so that was a great privilege and uh, he gave Tash a copy of his book which was called Titus Trump and the Triumph of Israel which was an Amazon bestseller. And uh, so he's a very influential man, that one, and a good friend of Christians all around the world. Um, the next shot was with me and uh, you probably recognise Ian and Mandy Warby there from Christians for Israel and Josh Reinstein. We just had a meeting together uh, to organise an organisation here in Australia to really uh, ramp up, you know, support for the nation of Israel here. Uh, and then uh, I met with the former uh, Minister for Science and Technology, which is Moody Sandberg. And Moody travels around the world and links up technology Israel technology is the top of the world. You can imagine that the technology, you know, this iPad, your computer, is all Israeli technology, Google Maps, all that sort of stuff. You touch, you touch something, it's probably got Israeli technology in it. <laughs> Moody um, uh, has a real passion to see embassies move into the nation of Israel. And so we're working together through Oceana. We went and, I went and visited the building that where uh, there are already two uh, embassies, Honduras and Guatemala, currently have their embassies in that building and we'd like to fill that with another 14 embassies from around Oceana, um, nations who would choose Israel's capital as the place to put their embassy. And uh, the scripture talks about that and links that with things like sheep nations, you know, so where nations decide they're going to support the nation of Israel uh, rather than spurn it. And I took a photo from inside that building. I went and prayed through that building. And the Israeli government will provide the, the office space for the nations. Little nations like Palau or Tonga or Samoa or Solomon Islands, they will supply the offices there. Papua New Guinea's uh, moving in there, Fiji this year apparently. And so we'd like to see Australia and New Zealand and all of the nations of Oceania um, in that building there. So uh, we want to go on a tour around Oceania. Um, Moody will meet the Prime Ministers and I'll meet the heads of churches and, and uh, just pray that the Lord will open the hearts of people, the people to go there. Then I met with uh, Shmulek Freed from Kieran Hayes' side. The building in the background is where 
Uh, ben Gurion, David Ben Gurion stood and declared uh, Israel a nation in 1948. And so Kieran Hayasad is in the process of bringing back Jewish people all the way to Israel. And uh, we've been involved with them for many, many years. And Shmuley's a good old, a friend of mine. And so uh, this is a fulfillment of biblical prophecy that when Jesus comes back, he's coming back to a nation that already exists named Israel. He's called the God of Israel. And uh, so Christians need to just understand the Lord that we're serving, the God of the Bible, is still the God of Israel. We must remember that. In, and in the future, the scripture says, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the, God, the house of the God of Israel, and he shall teach us of his way. So uh, the, the children of Israel, the Jewish people, are required to come back to the land of Israel for that to be fulfilled. I met a ton of Palestinian friends, uh, and uh, I, my, my good friend Michelle, that's his name, Michelle. You can see his, uh, his number one product is beer, coffee, Nescafe, espresso and cappuccino. So there you go. You got to, you know, every day I had a Bible. He's a Christian. He's an Orthodox Syrian Christian. And uh, we had wonderful discussions about everything happening in Israel. And uh, I had a daily coffee and Bible study with him. And then that was in the old city, right inside the Jaffa Gate. If you ever go to Israel... As a Christian, you'll be in the Christian quarter. You'll go in through that gate there. And the first little shop on the left, that's Michelle. So make sure you go and boost his business because it's very quiet in Israel at the moment for foreigners not seeming to be travelling there at the moment for some strange reason. Um, and then uh, my taxi driver, who is also a Syrian Orthodox Christian and uh, absolutely wonderful, he took me down. And he's the guy that thought I was quite strange uh, blowing a shofar at dawn down on the 1st of Aviv. I caught up uh, in terms of our Torah portion. We teach each week about the, 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 the first five books of the Bible and how they link up with Jesus and his teaching. And so I met up with the next slide is uh, Dr. Baruch Corman, And that's in the Jewish synagogue in the old city, in the Jewish quarter. He's a lover of Jesus. And he teaches the Torah portion in 25 languages every week uh, from Israel. And so uh, we're just uh, talking... I've been talking to Pastor Kyle and Baruch about um, being at Kingdom Festival, not this year, but maybe perhaps the next. We'll just pray and see. He's very happy to do that and come across. We were looking at a base, uh, you know, for ourselves as a ministry in Israel and looking particularly at the city of David, which was quite a, a wonderful place. And on the next one's a picture of the Gihon Spring. And <laughs> it's a really, it looks like you're underwater, but you're not. But anyway, that really does look like you're underwater. It's a picture from above looking down at the Gihon Spring, uh, very significant, the city of David. And I encourage you to do your own study on this particular place. It's the place, the original Jerusalem, the original Mount Zion. It's the place where David had his palace. It's the place at this very spot is the place where King Solomon, the son of David, was anointed king. And so this, uh, there's a lot of history there. Melchizedek met Abraham in this place, in this scripture. The Abrahamic covenant, Abraham walks through the pieces, happened at this spot. And the, the Davidic covenant, the prophecy that there would be a person on the throne, a king that would come from David, that Davidic covenant was made on this very spot. So there's a lot of significance here. It's traditionally the Garden of Eden, regardless of what you've seen on the telly. Uh, the Garden of Eden was considered to be at this spot. And the Gihon was one of the rivers named in the book of Genesis as the river that flowed through the garden. And so uh, I was staying in a place there that some of you know. I know Pam stayed in this place here, right in the city of David. And you look out your window and this is what you see. You see that from your window, that is the Temple Mount. That's how close we were to the Temple Mount uh, and where the dome is, you know, the dome, the golden dome. And then the next one, I think there's a picture of the Kidron Valley. I'm not sure. No, that's not the Kidron Valley. We were searching, uh, teaching the Torah portion from Israel, from Jerusalem. And so I went to see Christian Broadcasting Network, which is the next one, which is Chris Mitchell. And uh, he was showing me all of their equipment there and what would be required to broadcast the Torah portion from Israel. Why would we do that? Well, the scripture says in Isaiah, uh, Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mount of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. Many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways 
We shall walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the Torah and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And so we would like to broadcast the word of the Lord from Jerusalem to the rest of the nations. Um, and so Craig, Chris, of course, is a very well-known um, CBN is well known and so they've got a, a really amazing studio set up there. Um, we'd, I'd ask Kelly if she would do the design up for uh, the, the house there and she, she did an amazing job. It's like so many hours of work to, to put themes and things together. The next slide there, um, she was just um, showing us how the office and everything would be set up there uh, if we get to broadcast from there. And then uh, last of all, uh, amongst everything else that's going on there, I got time to go down to the Western Wall. This place is where the Jewish people will pray, and you can go and pray there. And why would people pray there? Because they're not allowed to pray up on the Temple Mount, where the Temple was. Um, they're, they're forbidden to do that. This place, the Western Wall, is the place that is closest to, to where the, tabin the Temple was, and the Holy of Holies. And so it's just up a bit to the left, but this is as close as you can get. And so I don't know if you've ever prayed there. I didn't really want to pray there. But every time I've gone and prayed at that wall, quite significant things happen. The presence of God is absolutely a different level at that place. So who's prayed there, by the way? Many of you here have prayed there. It's really an amazing place. So much prayer goes up in that place that you can really sense the presence of God. And so... Uh, while I was there, we had bombs going off. Iran decided to attack Israel just after Ramadan. Uh, I was woken up not by bombs but by the cheering of the Arabs. Uh, they were cheering and, you know, the kids were dancing in the street that Israel was under attack. Uh, and then the bombs started to go off above me and uh, the house was literally shaking as the Iron Dome was taking out those missiles and the sirens were going, and only 99% of the missiles were destroyed. But of course, once those missiles are destroyed, fragments are falling down and potentially can kill people because, you know, what, what goes up must come down. And so a lot of what's not reported is Jewish people who are killed by fragments of missiles that have been destroyed by the Iron Dome. And so you have 90 seconds. Once you hear a siren, you have 90 seconds to get undercover not because you'll get hit by a bomb. You're not talking about bombshells. It's just to avoid the fragments falling down from the sky. Let me just read this scripture, Ezekiel 38, verse 1, to put us in perspective. We know that Israel struck back at Iran. This is all in the scripture. So let's just quickly look here in Ezekiel 38. If you want to know what's going on, go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel's chronological. He's talking about what's happening, and we're starting to see this stuff happen right now. The children of Israel come back to their land in Isaiah 37 and uh, the, the bones get flesh back on them. We see in Ezekiel 38, it talks about a, a, a war called the, or the battles or wars, a series of wars called the Gog Magog Wars. Um, and so commentators are starting to really talk about it now because that's what it seems to be. There's a lot of prayer going up over there. The, the people are a little bit skittish, it's a, but they're trusting in God. Hear this word. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, verse 2, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog. Verse 4, I will turn you around and put hooks in your jaws. Everybody there who's praying says this is no longer a war of Israel or Arabs or anything. This is God's war. God's doing this. This is his time. Move aside. He needs to prepare for the coming of the Messiah. Uh, in verse 5, it mentions the nations, and the first one it mentions is Persia. Persia is Iran. Now, this is a prophecy is written in uh, 570 years before Jesus, so 2,500 years ago. Persia, Iran, Ethiopia, which is Yemen. You'll hear these names on the news even today. And Libya are with them. Verse 8, in the latter years you will come into the land, he's talking about the enemies, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel. The Jewish people have been gathering back to the land since 1948. And we're helping them because it's biblical prophecy. But the enemy is going to see them there, peaceful people, uh, which, the land which had long been desolate. They were brought out of the nations and now all of them dwell safely in unwalled villages. There's no fortress villages anymore. 
They're unwalled villages. This is the time. Verse 10, you will make an evil plan. 11, verse 11, you will say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. Verse 12, to take plunder and take booty. I'm just picking little parts of each verse. Verse 19, surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. People are getting prepared for a great earthquake there. Verse 21, I will call for a sword against God throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother. Verse 22, and I will bring him to judgment. Verse 23, thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. It is a time when it's enough. It's a time when the Jewish people have had enough. And God's had enough. He wants to bring back his people and he wants to bring his Messiah, Jesus, back, which we read in Revelation chapter 19 and verse 15. Now, out of his mouth, it talks about the rider on the white horse, Jesus, the Messiah, coming back. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations and he himself will smite them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. See, it's a time, dear ones, where you've got to make some choices. The scriptures coming to pass in very precise detail. Some people are absolutely oblivious of that. I mean, that's you know, I was one of those once upon a time until I realized the scripture actually is coming to pass in precise detail. Unlike any other, forget Nostradamus. He was they, they say he was five percent right. You know, well that's virtually about my record, you know. <laughs> but the Bible the Bible of things that have already come to pass, there's obviously things not yet come to pass, is 100% right. There are things of the... So we can count on its accuracy. And what's it saying? This is going to happen. So you've got to pick sides. You do. You've got to choose who you believe in. Do you believe in the God of Israel? Do you believe in God? Do you believe in Jesus, the Messiah? Are you serving him? Is your life passionate? Are you hot for him? It's like Pastor Ryan said, you love the world. There's a song by Keith Green, you love the light of your TV, you love the world and you're avoiding me. You spend more time on the television than you do in prayer or seeking God and seeing what you can do for the Lord. Now's the time to choose. Your life is going to be judged on how you, how you conduct your life. What are you doing? What are you doing for the people of the Lord? What are you doing for the Jewish people? Because that's very important because Jesus said, you know, when he says... You handed me a cup of water. You attended me when I was in prison. You attended me when I was sick. And as much as you did this to the least of these, my brethren. He was talking about his people, the Jewish people. How are you helping them? What have you done so far? Do you need to do more? What are you doing to win people to the Lord? What a beautiful song we sang this morning. It's absolutely an astounding song. How do you prepare? Well, I hope you're doing Passover for the very least. Because Jesus said, as a commandment, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. That's what Jesus said. If you love me, you'll obey my commands. And what did he say? Do this in remembrance of me. What was he talking about? He was talking about Passover. He's the great fulfillment of Passover. That's just a little few snippets of my trip, my dear friends. Thank you so much for your prayers. Um, you can travel there, I believe, safely if, you're in the, if the Lord tells you to go and if you're under the protection of the Lord.